Hey, hey, we out here. We are in Ferguson uh, Community Center. About to do a live taping. Uh, let's talk. It's going to be good. Got a couple people here right now. Got Lady Rue over there getting herself together. There's your Lady Rue right there. We got Mark Anthony up in here. Got the host. Here's Lady Rue. Fabulous. <laughs> And we out here. So we about to get it in. Hi, my name is Chanel Halloy. I am a talk show host for my show Let's Talk. And we are having a big panel discussion. And the topic is going to be about church hurt and offenses. And we have the wonderful pastor. And I, I'm so sorry, I am horrible with the names. Pastor, pastor Rue, that's cool. Pastor Rue. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> with us. And we have some other amazing panelists. <laughs> Amen. Man. Yes, and his lovely wife is here, and we have more people coming, and we are expecting a wonderful, awesome, exciting, motivating, yes. uplifting, yes. enlightening move of God in this show yes. on today. If All you right. can get here, the address is 1050 Smith Avenue. Get here now. All right, Bye. Where, where can people follow you at? Oh, you can follow me on Facebook mm -hmm. at uh, um, Chanel Lynn. Type that in on Facebook. Okay. Um, Instagram, Chanel underscore empowered underscore woman. Um, you can also find me on Twitter, uh, right. Chanel Lynn. Gotcha. And also Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 7 p.m., you can call in to Elation Radio. I'm on there faithfully at 7 p.m. Yep. I don't know the phone number by far. <laughs> right, right, right. But we'll give you that information if you guys need it. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Check you later. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have here uh, Pastor Chris Harris. What's up? What's up, man? Give us a shout out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, shout out. Uh, to my people, Pastor Rue, Lady Rue. Bless you, man. And uh, we're just excited to be here to partner with them on today yeah. with this event. Looking forward to just shedding some information and inspiration to the people of God. That they might be blessed uh, by what we have to say and what God gives us. Uh, so uh, tune in. Amen. God bless. All right. We're going to follow you on uh, social media. Uh, you can follow me at Leo Ministries, L E O Ministries. You can also follow me at okay. Brown State Temple, yeah. C O G I C. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Bless. The topic for today is about church hurt and offense. Um, the Lord gave me this topic because we experienced so much uh, church hurt uh, and offense and everything, and a lot of people uh, have left the church, and a lot of people who are still in the church are hurting while smiling on the outside, but dying, but yet dying on the inside, and a lot of us have questions and everything. So. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce the glorious panel. <laughs> Here we have Miss Kimmy Kim, Kim Robinson, we also have the wonderful Mark Anthony, <laughs> CEO of Mark Anthony's Collection. And next to him, we have Pastor Rue, the yeah. anointed. Yeah. And next to him, we have Pastor Chris. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm excited. These all are entrepreneurs and leaders in the church. And I personally know that when you're in leadership or when you have a business, to be uh, successful, you go through hard trials. You go through adverse situations. and But the moment that you reach the level of success is because you did not give up. And so these panelists, uh, my panelists here is very, very, very qualified and well endowed uh, with wisdom on how to overcome adversity and obstacles. Because I'm quite sure that they too have experienced and overcome church hurt as well. So... Let's get right to it. Amen. Question number one. What could be the root cause of being oversensitive concerning offense? What could be the root cause of being oversensitive? We're going to start with the lovely Miss Kimmy Kim. I would go first, right? <laughs> 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 Let's go first. But, um, I really believe 
it starts with yourself. If you don't know who you are, so, and I have learned over the years that when your foundation does begin with God, you can go into the world and learn that your identity is not what the world's giving you. So when you don't have the foundation of God, it's kind of hard to understand who you are, and insecurity comes because you're not secure in the Lord. I remember this parable in the Bible. It talks about the lost sheep. God made us. So if he made us, how can we stray from him? And when we stray from him, how can we have security? It's impossible. So that is one of the reasons why you think that people have insecurities, because they're not secure with the Lord. The root, the root cause of Insecurity. Over, over sensitive in the church or outside the church? Both. Both? Well, uh, that covers a couple, couple of things. A couple of things. You've got to know uh, who you are before you come in church. you got to know who you are while you're outside of church. And this is the reason why a lot of individuals are hurt because they don't, they're hurting when they're coming to church and, and because they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. And what I mean by that is you have individuals who give their life to the Lord. And now what was told what was wrong, I mean what was right, now is being told what's, it was wrong. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. Because uh, sin don't, it, 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 it feels good. Yeah, it looks Amen. good. Yeah, yeah. I ain't never seen nobody say it sin and say this don't feel good. Yeah. yeah. So there is now you come into church and and, and and now individuals are telling you this is wrong. And insecurities come in to the point I've been doing this, I've been doing this, I've been doing this, and then a build up of insecurity that I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing this wrong, but you're actually doing what what is natural to you? It's natural to see it. Am I, Amen. Preacher, am I right or wrong? Amen. Yeah. So you, you were born. You were born into this world uh, in sin. In sin. So when, so when he's shaping, well, see, I know these guys. They gonna, they gonna, they gonna bring the word. But you're shaped in iniquity. But, but the, the insecurity comes when you don't know who you are. And this is the reason why you have to get into the Word and understand who you are. Yeah, yeah, to know who you are. He was born a leader, but somebody had to pour into him and so who he was. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's a father and, and a husband, but somebody had to show him because there was one time he was insecure. Or who he was. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Okay. I'm going to shut up because we get time. Okay. <laughs> Same question? Same question. You want me to read again? No, it's good. Okay. And how you talk about at home, starts at home. Yeah. Uh, you, you may get abused at home. Okay. You ain't get talked about at home. Yeah. And then you leave home and go to school, now you got peer pressure. Yeah. And then that leads to when you get old, now you feel like you haven't been pretty enough or, or, or cute enough the yes. whole time. Now you have insecurities. So then when you get to the church, everybody's looking at me. Yes, yes. And then you try to do your best, but you can't do your best because you've been doing your best the whole time, but they've been downing you all the time. Yes. Oh, so nice. then you get to the point to where how can I be who God has called me to be, but I don't even know who I am. Yes, Jesus. So then you have to get to the point from at home, then you get to the church home, part, yeah. and then you have to take off those layers. Yeah. So then when you take off those layers, you got to be broken. Right. So it's like you got to go to the root of that thing to find out what's happening. They used to call me Mr. Green Jeans when I was in school. <laughs> I, 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 was, I didn't have much money and I had to wear those same green jeans every day. And then I had an afro, so they called me Afro King. Eh? But I didn't know when girls picked on you, they liked you. They liked you. <laughs> they liked you. <laughs> they liked you. <laughs> and found out, like, hey, I just took it the wrong way. Right. Right. And you just got to find the root of it. And that's yeah. it. Figure it out. And once you do figure it out, now you can tweak how you want your legacy to come. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Uh, I agree with the rest of the panel and uh, everything that's been said. It's been great. just want to add to that that, yes, it does. Uh, it is a part of a person's insecurities mm -hmm. as far as being oversensitive. Yeah. Um, 
but it's not only internal, but it's also external. So it's a, it's a mixture of both things that they're battling, they're dealing with some things. Um, one of the biggest things that I think uh, causes or, or creates a problem for people that are oversensitive is unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. Unrealistic expectations uh, will poke holes in who you are and poke, poke, poke holes in your ego. Yes. Because unrealistic expectations says that, you know what, everybody's going to like me. Yes. I mean, whether you're in the church, whether you're in the world, yes. you're gonna, your, your mind, yes. if you live that way and say, you know, everybody's going to like me, nope. then you go out the door to school, uh -huh. you're going to get hit with something. You're like, they don't like me. <laughs> you're going to go to church and like, okay, you know, this is God's house, yes. love, I'm going to be received. You're going to go there, somebody's going to frown up and say, who are you? Who right. do you think right. you are? Yeah. So good. I think oversensitive people wrestle and they battle with un. Um, what did I say? Unrealistic expectations. expectations. Yes. That's yes. really in the, a major thing to people like that. Appreciate yes. that. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That. awesome. Awesome. Awesome yes. answers. Awesome. So I'll, I'll, I'll give my own answer for a second. Um, so, from another uh, standpoint, which is added on to everything that you all have said, you've already pretty much said everything. Uh, but one root cause could also be um, the fact that a person could already be offended by someone or something else that hasn't been dealt with um, or resolved. Uh, and unre unresolved offense can cause a person to walk in offense and it can warp the off uh, offended person's perception. It's like walking around with a fresh wound and if anyone touches it or accidentally brushes up against it, it's painful to the one who's hurt. Even though you didn't cause the wound, and everyone has to be extremely cautious around this person walking around on pins and needles so that this offended person won't get hurt. And so let's talk about unforgiveness for a second. Um, so unforgiveness goes much deeper than just holding on uh, or holding one in bondage. It goes much more deeper than uh, stunning your spiritual growth, your mental and emotional growth. That thing becomes you. Uh, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the person that a, per a, the person that one could be holding hostage in their heart um, becomes a part of that person. It becomes a part of their heart. Um, and that very thing that you despise about them is the very thing that you become. Because hurt people hurt people. Uh -huh. So you will find yourself doing the very thing you hated seeing or experiencing from the offender. Your character merges with theirs. And you have actually become one with the offense. And have unconsciously have created a soul tie. And sometimes you hold unforgiveness in your heart for so long you become it. And in turn, or I, you're, uh, in turn you are identified with that thing. Yes. Okay, so, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, number three, uh, this question, now, in order to get to the part where we are unified for real and loving one another for real. We really have to get down to the ugly of the things that cause, cause us to be divided. So my question um, is about sexual immorality in the church. Okay. Why do you think people in the church are so comfortable uh, with fornicating and committing adultery in the church. And some, not all, but some believe that someone else's marital spouse is theirs. Let me read again. You read again. You there. <laughs> We're going deep with it. We're going deep. We're going deep with it. Go ahead. I was comfortable. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that you got to get to that point where you, you really want to do better. And, and 
you gotta like I don't what I what I would do when I first got saved, like this is my testimony, I couldn't go no further than twenty one days without fornicating with my wife. And on that twenty first day it was hard for me because I didn't wanna disbelieve God. And that happened until we got married. So we got married uh, six months after I got saved. And I couldn't keep on messing up my relationship with God. I didn't want him to take his Holy Spirit from me. So after each time, I would see if I could still speak in tongues. Wow. Uh, can we be real? Yes, be real. Because Let's be real. I, I, I know this will set people free because ain't nobody talking about it. They saying I saved till marriage. He was a lie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what I had to do was see if I still was saved. Right. See if I still have the anointing. Yeah. See if I still can speak in the Holy Ghost yeah. and all that. Yeah. And my wife, we would mess with each other when we wanted to be the the, the aggressor. Yeah. What you scared now or something? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Vice versa. Yeah. But we had to get to that point to where I don't want to keep displeasing God yeah. with what I'm doing. Right. Because uh, a prophet came to me one time. I was going to get my first bottle. I came from the streets, gang bangers, drug dealer, and all that. Yeah. So I said, I need to get my own bottle so I know this stuff for myself. Yeah. So yeah. on my way going into the Christian store, a prophetess came up to me and said, You need to stop having sex. I looked at her like, Who were you? Right. And she said, Every time you ejaculate, there will be water and the anointing and the blood coming out. Wow. And that really made me think that I need to stop doing this because I don't want to keep putting that sin guilt on myself. Without having that sin guilt, you will continue to do it. Without conviction, you will continue to do it. Without the presence of God, you will continue to do it. So then I said, you know what, I'm sick of living like this or being a fraud. You can only be a fraud long enough. That's right, that's right. The cover going to come off of you when you yeah. keep thinking that you are what you say you are, but you really ain't because on, behind closed doors, yes, you are Kelly. Yeah. 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 You treat me. say, well, Kelly, you are uh, who else out there on the chain? You whoever it is out there. Playboy, man. Playboy, you you have Come on with it. You know, you are the cuddler. You are where you are. Yes. But so you got to get to that point to where you say, I'm sick of wearing this mask yes. right. and uh -huh. let me be who God has called right. right. And, 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 and it's a learn, a learn behavior. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. It don't happen overnight. Oh, no, it's a learn behavior. When, like I said before, uh, learning how to live for God is a learn behavior. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So the reason why a lot of people are in church hurt is for the simple reasons that you coming into a place, uh, four walls, what we call church, right. and saying, and we have these rules that you never heard of before, mm -hmm. and you're saying, I have to abide by these rules. Mm -hmm. Sexual, you have to understand, God made you sexual. Right. 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 He made you sexual. Yes, he made you that Amen. way. Yeah. And, and here's the funny thing. God made you that way, and then he says, control it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that is up to us as men of God, as well as women of God, to control your desires. Mm. And even though that God has given you that, and that's the reason why He's giving you a wife. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna touch on this. That's yes. the reason why a man is supposed to be with a female, yes. and a female is supposed to be with a man. Talk about, Talk about it. it. Come on. Okay, because that. It, I've never seen two men reproduce, and I've never seen two females reproduce. It's not natural. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's not of God, and it's unnatural. Amen. Uh, but I'm saying to this, as far as controlling what God is giving you, and that is your drive and desire. It is a God-given gift. Now, when you stop having these drives and desires, then there's, you know you come of age. Uh, I'm almost 60, and I'm controlling my drive and my desire. Yeah, because here's the thing. Romans 1, I think, goes down to the 26th verse. When God uh, said, you know what? Since you want this, yeah, you won't stop. Go, go for it. Yeah. And since you want this, and you won't stop, go for it. But here's the penalty for me giving you over to your own mindset. It's the penalty. So here's the thing. 
If you want to go and do it, like I told this person, if you want to go and do it, go on and do it. Amen. Right. Yeah, you're a free law oh. agent. Go on and do it. But there's a penalty for it. Yes. Yeah. Anytime you go against the will of God, anytime there's a penalty. Now, when you obey the word of God, there's a reward. It's real simple. It's real simple. So, to go along with what you're saying, some people have not controlled their drive and desire because for 30 years they've been driving. And then all of a sudden they come over here and they said, oh, I can't drive no more? No. You can't. And, and you, have to, you have to bring that thing. The Bible says you have to modify your flesh every day. Daily. And that's everything about you. Awesome. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. So yeah. anybody that tell you they're not putting themselves together or putting themselves down daily, or they got it all together. They lied. And I tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. And I tell them the truth. Wow, that's so true. Hey, Amen. <laughs> wow. Can you hear me, Kira? Wow. Let me tell you something. It's easy to say than do. I was a sex fiend. Okay? A sex addiction. And sex was part of my sin. That was my cross. So, it's easy to say to get rid of it and things like that. So, we can't do it. The Holy Spirit has to do it for you. Yes. Like it says in Romans 12, 1. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. So, with that being said, I had a wonderful church in Atlanta that has sex education. A lot of churches don't have that. They don't teach you what sex is for. They don't teach you um, why it is important to wait. Because you have the spirits on top of spirits on top of spirits. And you have so many people inside of you. And so you become insecure. Because you're not fulfilled. You don't have that completeness. You lost your first love for one. Secondly, I really believe that the church is ignoring because of ties. I'm going to be honest. A uh, deacon ties. Deacon is doing this, and there's pastors doing this. I'm just, I see it. I see it in church. So when people want to really be taught, and they want to talk about the sex, why sex is not being taught, it's, it comes from the leader. I really believe that when you have sex education in the church, it helps. My pastor, Dr. Cameron Alexander, and Adam Young, Missionary Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, he taught on the importance of why it is important to wait. There's nothing like having a, like a uh, honeymoon when you and your uh, spouse meet for the first time. Right. You guys become one. But if you do it before marriage, what you're looking for, what, what's the purpose? So I really believe it is important that we definitely present ourselves as a living sacrifice, give it to the Lord, because it's a day-by-day -day process, because I deal with this every day. I have desires, but I've given it to God. And I'm telling you, there, are, there, there is a such thing as sex uh, addiction. And, and um, unfortunately, it is real. Yeah. And um, I have learned just to give it to the Lord, and He can do that for us. Yeah. So, it's a day by day. Pastor Chris, yes. wait anxiously to hear from you. Yes. Um, I, I would say uh, that you touched on some great things. Uh, Lady Karen, give me names. Give me names. Oh. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think that the church, uh, we don't tackle that issue enough. So, yeah. um, because we we are not addressing these sexual mm -hmm. uh, misconduct um, issues, that we are losing a, an entire generation yes, to mm -hmm. uh, sexual immorality. Yes, sir. Uh, and and so uh, a lot of indulgence uh, occurs yes. because of it, out mm -hmm. of ignorance, yes. um, out of. Uh, not being aware, yes. and so the the more that we as a church and as leaders begin to talk about it, address it, the right the right things, you know what's right, what's wrong, how to go about things. Like like my brother was saying, you know, uh, sex, you know, it's it's a natural, it's a natural thing, you know, emotions, it's a natural thing. But how do you deal with it? Uh, from the perspective of being in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that is that we have to control it. Mm -hmm. God wants us to control it. He wants us to put it in its place. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, he, he's never, God has never been against it. We, we just don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And so the, the church the church has got to get into a position where we, yes. we don't cover it. We, 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 we allow it to go on. Yes. The church allows stuff to go on. Yes. 
we yeah. we just don't we don't want to we don't we just don't want to touch it. We know mm -hmm. stuff is happening. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. we we just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and 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 so if if I deal with it or if I address it with you, then you're going to understand that I'm a sexual being. Right. Now I I have intimate moments or I have emotions, and I don't want you to learn about my emotions. I don't want you to learn about my sexuality because. You know, that's off limits. Mm -hmm. But the church, from leadership on down, we have to address it. Mm -hmm. yes. We have to deal with it. Because yes. it's not being dealt with in the home. Right. I'm getting ready to be quiet. No. <laughs> we're, not, we're, fine. Not, we're, not, we're not addressing it in the home. Yes. They are addressing it in the schools wrong. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you go to the East Coast, for the last three, maybe four years in the sexual education class, they have particular, they have... They have same-sex education. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, let me take a little bit further. In their sexual education classes, they teach young people in, in six, seven, eight, yes, in high school, yes, they teach them how to perform oral sex yes, to one another. Right. Same sex, opposite uh, sex, and they teach it yeah. in the sexual yes, education sir. classes. Yes, sir. I have literature on it yes, at my church. Wow. That they teach that. Yeah. So the church, we cannot be following up. We've got to lead. Yes. Yes. We've got to make sure that That's we are it. setting the tone within our community concerning sexuality. It's, 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 and, and the preacher hit on something that is so important. Everything starts at home. At home. At home. Everything starts at home. Uh, but if your home is jacked up, mm -hmm. If your home is jacked up, you have a yeah. disillusional That's right. That's right. father, That's right. and you have a deranged mother, yes. and they have children, and they're going to have dysfunction in the home. Mm -hmm. Now, with the with the same same sex, uh, heterosex, and all of that, it's it's all the same. God looks at it all the same. With if 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 you're intimate before marriage, it's a sin. Right. If you are intimate with anyone outside of what God has said, it's wrong. Right. It, it, it's, it's either a male and, and a female or a female and a male. I know I'm a probably, I, I don't tag me on Facebook because I lose some. I lose some. <laughs> Every week I lose people because I, I, I teach this. But here's the thing. When you teach this at home, and then when it's taught in the secular world, they can identify what's right or wrong because my mother and my father said it's wrong. Mm -hmm. But when they teach it in the secular world, it's okay for you to be with a boy if you're a boy, and if you're a girl, it's okay for you to be with a girl. That's what the secular world says, the secular system. And we know that the system of this world is being guided by the evil one. Mm -hmm. So we as in home and then uh, in church with the leaders who are teaching correctly that this is wrong. Because if we don't, it's, gonna, it's going to explode even more to what it is now. Even in the church, even in the church, there's things that are going on in the church that is being overlooked <laughs> that's being overlooked yes, sir. Yes, sir. because leadership yes, sir. won't put a stop to it. Yes, right. yes, don't 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 hide your face my sister don't hide your face <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going I'm not going to touch on it no, because no. leadership will not put it down shut it down I don't care. You know, they, they put this thing, don't judge me. Right. I'm not judging you because I see the evidence. You uh -huh. see. You're, yeah. yeah, you're showing it. And yeah. then also, remember, when we were growing up, your parents just told you not to do it. I wasn't explained to why right. yeah, it is so important right. Right. to wait. Right. So my parents told me not to do it. And you can't go over Pookie's house. Right. Right. I don't know why. You can't go over Ray Ray's house. Because right. you don't know what's going on over there. Right. And my brother's right. late. Right. And speaking of that, I'm going to make real quick two things. One, this generation, when it comes to sexuality and other things that we're dealing with, this generation has a different system. Yeah. And I'm going to make this point real quick. And we, it's a very important uh, 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 point that I want to make. Back in our day, I'm yeah. 42 years old, back in my day, we were taught not to do something, like you were saying. Right. Right. Now it's permissible to do a few things. Mm -hmm. 
So I want to take a little bit further. In the church, the church responsibility is to teach people yes. how to live free from sin. sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This generation yeah. now teaches how to manage yes. where, where's sin. My, where's my offering? You yes, cannot sir. manage. Yes, you cannot yes, manage yes, sin. sin. No. Come on now. God never set it up. He never Come set on. salvation up for you to it. manage sin. Yeah. You need to live yeah. free yeah. from yeah. sin. Yeah. That's yeah. number one. Then I, that's my last point. I, I can preach on that all day. Yes, I'm going to touch on yeah. that real quick. Yeah. Okay. How we talked about how after you get married, you had it already. Since we've been married, it's been like the first time every time. Wow. Yeah, I like that. Wow. Because wow. 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 it's, ho it's holy match. Yeah. 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 Every time, like, girl, it's like the first time. Yeah. Because he redeemed us from it. He redeemed us from that. So then also this, coming as a young man in the streets, I had everything, menages, all that. And some of these quote-unquote preachers, they never had that. So once you start getting that leadership role, now it comes to you because the anointing draws. And you don't know how to say no to the draw. Anointing draws, and you don't know how to say no to the draw, right? Because when you get saved, you're still the same person. You still got the same swag. You can still pull what you want to pull. Right. But when you get up. Uh, in that holy place, you don't pull no more because no, you've already no been chosen. Uh, uh, so that's what people got to understand, uh, and that's what's wrong with the church now because integrity and character is gone. Uh -huh. So when you see the new <laughs> church come up or new guys, you like, oh, they like everybody else. No, there's a difference. Yeah. 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 And, and and it comes with the mindset. Yeah, yeah. it comes with the mindset. Rick. <laughs> what is you, you, you? And I love this guy. And I don't want to be like I was. Right. right. That's the key. I don't want to be the slugger T that I was. Right. That can knock down anything. I want to be the man of God to say, "Hey, sweet thing, hey, you go. brother, you don't gotta do that." That's right. Because right. if you, no, I'm going. going. No. And, 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 and it's a mindset. Just what he's saying. Yes, it's, it it's it's transforming mind. the mind. Mm -hmm. It's transforming the mind. Once you transform the mind, your body, your life will change. That's right. Now, I'm, I'll be honest. I see sisters all day long. Oh, yeah. Mark Anthony, stop this. <laughs> 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 There's a sale going on right now. I see sisters all day long. Right. Now, you caught me 30 years ago. Right? Bang, 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 bang. Right, right. right. But now that I'm more mature, yeah. it's right. discipline. Right. Yeah. 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 And discipline. Yeah. And discipline to the point that I have individuals who had presented themselves right. and I shut it down. Yes, sir. With, and this is what they did. Brother, I appreciate because they've been hurt and been taken advantage of so before. So but yeah. no one has ever shut them down. Shut them down. Wow. Right. Wow. Right. I, mean, I, I ain't dead. Right. I'm just disciplined yes, and mature. Yes, and it comes with the renewing uh, of the mind. mind. Yes, yes. The Bible says you have to renew your, renew your mind daily. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, I'm in transition. Romans 12 and 2. Yeah. For y'all who don't get a good You're in transition. And I got a heathen that exists inside of me. Come on, that's good. I have a heathen. An uncircumcised yeah, nature. Living inside yeah, that's of you. Yep. That's to what the you point that he wants to rule. Yeah. Paul yeah. said it was a war within my member. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for, those that don't, for those that are dealing with uh, 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 sexual, um, what is that, when they don't really know whether if I'm a boy or if I'm a girl. Or identity. Or a identity. Dealing with an identity crisis. Yeah. Huh. That's a trick of the enemy as well. No, of course. Yes, it is. Because yes, it is. that's that's not of God. Yes, sir. Now what I just want to use it's this. a spirit. It's a spirit. Uh -huh. And I just want to throw this. And a lot of times I say, well, no, I was born like this. Uh -uh. No, I was like this. Yeah. No, God allowed me. No, 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 it's not. I just want to read this one scripture right. just to prove it. Okay. It says here, uh second chapter of Genesis, um, talking about when G when God put uh Adam to sleep. Verse 21, he says, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up his place with, with flesh. And the rib that the Lord gave had taken from man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, and so, this is not reading the way I, 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 I love it to read. I love the King James Version. But it says, it says that he takes the woman 
out of man. Yes. Mm. I know y'all go. I know, I know some of y'all might have oh, the short. Come on. That's right. Like, the short bus, but you'll get it when you get home. <laughs> he took the woman out of man. Uh-huh. As a man, you can't have tendencies. No. I mean, I know we do. I know some do. But that's developed. That's a learned behavior. Mm. He took that out. <laughs> y'all All right, let's come on. Yeah, that's good. Let's do it. 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 let us do <laughs> it out. Oh, stuff for how you was pronounced. Took it out. That's gone. That's good. Yeah. Oh. He took that out. That's good. And gave and and he took <laughs> the rib out of man, man. and created a wow. female. Female. And then he presented what he created to the man. Read yeah. the Bible. That's right. And 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 and, and, and man called yeah. the man called him said, "Oh, this is woman. Bought my ball. Bought my ball. And they had equal authority. Yes. That's it." Had equal right. authority. Equal so with the world. Okay. <laughs> okay. So with worldly people and the church, uh, uh, we're on the same subject. Is the world rightfully accusing the church of being hypocritical? Yes. 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 All day long. Yes. 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 So, how can we, or what do you think that we as the church uh, can do to show the love of God and draw by the love of God? Real because the serious, exactly. Real testimony. Yeah, they, so, they need to see some real transparency, transparency in the church. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Transparency mm-hmm. in the church. Mm-hmm. So Stop something? playing games. Mm-hmm. Stop mm-hmm. playing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hypocritical is like pretending to be something that you're not, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but why do we go to church? You go to church. Church will never save you. Right. Church will never right. save you. Right. Only right. God can uh, redeem you. Right. Only God can redeem you. I can live saved at church Amen. all day long. All day. I can live in those four walls. I can live. My fight comes outside when I step outside the church. That's it. That's it. There ain't no fight in the church. But can we all live without sin? Can you live a sinless life? Ain't nobody, ain't no, and, and anybody that tells you they they live a sinless life, they are not telling you the truth. Now, hypocrites. Uh huh. Come on. This is what the hypocrite does. Because I, I said there's hypocrites in the church, there's hypocrites out in the world too. Yeah. Hypocrites, you got fake eyelashes and fake, <laughs> fake this and fake that, but you want a real man. Right. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh. I'm gonna say that. nobody said that on that. Yeah. 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 But let me say amen. Real talk. They got quiet. I want a real man. Okay. Everything about you is fake. I say hypocrite. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Come on, where they man. forget Come where on. they came from. That's uh-huh. good. That's God good. has Come delivered on. you. Yeah. And God has set you free. Right. It is not your responsibility to put anybody else down. Your responsibility That's is to live for God. That's it. And show them example that you can do it. Yes. Right. That's, That's it. it. That's not to judge anybody. So, oh, look at her skirt. It's, it's too up. Come on. And, and and look at her eyelashes and look at this and look, look at him. Look at him. That's not your job. Your job is to live according to what the word of God says. And if you do that, people will see God in you and want to run up until you say, man, there's something different about you. What can I do to be like you? Then your job is to direct them to God, not to yourself. So the church is is full of hypocrites. I say it, I'm going to say it, put this on tape. Church folks are borderline psychotic. Well, (laughs) 
I, I got to defend folks. the church. I got to defend the church. Let me tell you the reason. No, no, no. Wait, 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 Kim. I'm sorry. I think it was kind of Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Don't lose it. And I'll talk real quick. We, as, as the church, we have to be very careful not to allow the secular to determine what church is. Amen. Okay. We cannot allow the secular Richard. to determine... You know what holiness is, okay. what salvation, uh-huh. what what righteousness is. Uh-huh. Reason being is, the first thing to to knowing anything, you have to learn about it, yeah. and you have to know enough about it. Yeah. Yeah. When you do not know enough about it, you cannot dictate or determine mm-hmm. what it, what it is. Yeah. You don't have enough knowledge. You don't read enough. You don't study enough. Mm-hmm. So never, and I'm very strong and very adamant when it comes to that. Never let the secular determine what church is or what church should be. Yes. Really, that's for us to do. Yeah. What has happened is we have lowered our standards. Holy living is a, is a way of life, and it's a standard for all of us to come up to. When we as a church lower our standards, then we are accused of that. And we are. There, there's people in the church that are hypocritical. As a matter of fact, a hypocrite is the hardest person to get saved. Yeah. I can, not me, but let's just follow me. I can minister to somebody. I can minister to a sinner and get yes. a sinner to, yeah. to get saved uh-huh. faster than uh-huh. me talk to a hypocrite. Yeah, yeah. And that that's hypocrite going to stay yeah. right there. That's that's right. In, the, in their mind, that's they think, right. I'm already yeah, right. Already I'm, already, I'm already set. I'm already good. Whether I do right or wrong, I'm good with the master. Mm-hmm. So it's critical that as, as a church, we don't let, the, don't let the secular define us. But it's also critical that we make sure that we are, you know, living up to, to a certain particular standard. Yeah. Yes. It's critical. Yes. Miss Kimmy King. Well, just making some points. I didn't get my point. But my point was basically when I come to church, I come because I want to get fed by my shepherd. Yeah. So I could go outside the walls and get um, some more fish so that Jesus can clean up. So basically I don't I know the church doesn't save me. I know that's gonna be some religious folks and people with relationships. But with that being said, we still have an opportunity to still minister to those who are hypocrites. Yes. We still have the opportunity yes. to show people who didn't know who are coming into the church yes. to let them know that God loves that yes. hypocrite person yes. as well as me because I'm broken. Yes. So with that being said, when I think about hypocrite people, like I call them Pharisees. I, I, I pray for them. Let me tell you why. You just uh, spoke on that. Mm-hmm. Layers mm-hmm. and layers of hurt. Maybe they had church hurt. They never dressed it. Maybe they've been hurt before. They never dressed it. But one thing I have problems with the church is when people condemn each other. I'm still reminded. Talk about word. it. Jesus came yes, that he saved, not that he condemned. So when you see someone with a problem, put them to the side. Let them know, sister, my brother, this is not how you do these things. Mm-hmm. We don't have enough of corrections right. there. Mm-hmm. People point your sins, but they don't want to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. the difference between yeah, the real church and the world church. Right. Right. And unfortunately, right. we do see a lot of the yeah, world yeah, coming yeah, to the right. church for right. that reason. Right. Yeah. 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 Pastor, any, any? Answer. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm good. okay. Uh, I'm about to hit, hit the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. Yeah. I mean, we got to just be who God has called you to be. Yeah. Integrity and character. Once that comes back, they can see the, tra- the church stand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then once that comes back, and then we'll be straight, then we can move forward. We steadily in the back trying yeah. to yeah. cover up stuff. Cover up That's stuff it. And, not, not and, and make we gotta make disciples fish and we gotta we got work to do. They still in the back plan. We yeah. I'm on the front line. I need some help. Quit playing yeah. in the back. Right. I'm, I'm fishing right now. You looking for a church home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm fishing. Yeah. I, I, I ain't got time to waste time running out. Yeah. I'm yeah. on it. Yeah. And, and the Bible says this. If we and we, and we, no, man, don't be so You are wonderful. So the, wonderful. Harvest, the harvest is plentiful. It, it's just the individual labor to, to Yeah, the labor. The harvest is yeah, 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 right. Yeah, but yes, the, 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 the laborers are few. Yes. So the thing is, is that we, we have individuals who are fishers. Mm-hmm. And they're fishing for individuals with their lives, not so much with their words, because you know anybody can say anything with right. your life. Mm-hmm. That's good. When I walk out of here, 
My name has got to mean something. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, it has to create something because nothing that God, his vibration went out and it did not come to him empty. That's good. Come on. That's good. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So you got to be on the right vibration. You got to be on the right frequency. Like the young brother was setting up the stuff. He was putting it in the wrong hole and that's why I was getting a lot of feedback. He wasn't doing it right. But yeah. your vibrations got to line up with the will of God. Yeah. And once you do that, you will be able to create. You'll be able to create. This is a creation of man. Mm -hmm. God didn't create this microphone because what they did was their word literally God gave them and this is this is off the subject but it's true. God gave them the ability to think this to be and then God gave them the ability to put it on paper and the very thing to put this thing together, the metal and the rubber and all that, it was already created by God. Amen. But God gave us this ability to put all this together to create a microphone. Vibration. Vibration. If you don't know how to vibrate, you're not going to create. If that makes any kind of sense. Your word. Your word. When you put your word out there, I'm going to be here at 3 o'clock. You, you, you got to be here at 3 o'clock. If you said you're going to be here at 5 o'clock, you got to be here. That's your word. Yes. And if your word don't match up to who you are, yeah. what you got? Right. I can go out here and get a fifty thousand dollar loan right now because my word right. is right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what and, and that's what make God so powerful. There you go. Because in his word he says he watches over his word to perform. Would you say yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. he watches over his yes, word to perform? So now what I want to do is paint a quick picture and I'm gonna move on. I want you to think about he 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 said that he said he'll watch over his word to perform it. God speaks the word. Yeah. God the Father speaks the word. And then after he's speaking, he's covering the word that he's speaking as he goes. As yes. it, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Making sure, yeah. ensuring mm. to make sure that that word manifests the yes, way it sir. should. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So while I'm speaking it, I'm gonna cover it. Yes. Sir. Come on. My God. I'm not just gonna speak it and just let it go out there. Yeah. But I'm going to cover it as cover I speak your word. Mm. That's it. So he, he's covering his word while he's speaking it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Shielding it to make sure <laughs> that the word becomes manifest. Yeah, yeah. Reading yeah. John the third That's chapter. Good. When it, he, said, he said, it, the, the, the worlds were framed by his word. Yes, by his yes. word. Yes, sir. But it, went, but, but it wasn't just because he spoke it. He watched over it. Yes. I'm, I'm going to ensure that that takes place. I'm going to protect the word. I'm going to yeah. make sure that the word gets to its destination. I'm going to cover it to, so that it can come into manifestation. Yeah. So he covers his word. That's what we have to do. Yeah. And yeah. as the church, we've got to yeah. cover our yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. If we're sanctified, yeah. if we're set apart, yeah. if we're saved, yeah. if we're filled yeah. with his Holy Spirit, yeah. we've got to ensure it. we got to cover it. Yeah. Lifestyle it. we got to lifestyle That's it. it. Yeah. And that word, yeah. and the we, word of God, the Word of God became a living being. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Became a living being. What are you talking about, man? Uh, the, the Word of God became a living being. Yes. In the beginning was the Word. Was the word. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. God. Yeah. All things were created by God. God. There you go. But your Word, the Word of God, was so powerful that it became a human being to free us from the bondage yes. of the law of sin and death. Come on now. That's God's word. That's God's word. That's God's word. Now, if you don't accept the gift, yes. the word of God, yes. Yes. there's a penalty. It goes back to what we were saying. Yes. Yes. It goes back to what we were saying. Yes. It's, it's and it's not so much a, a dying because every human being is going to die. But here's the thing. Adam... If you disobey me, you're going to die. Yes. What it means is you're going to be totally separated from God. Right. Totally separated from God. 
you're going to die spiritually uh -huh. and you're going to die Natural. physically. Mm -hmm. A thousand years is like a, 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 a day, day, God. Is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Adam lived how long? This is Bible study. How long? 930 years. Wow. He didn't leave a day. He didn't leave a, He did not live a day. And he died spiritually for the simple reason is he was totally separated from God. And that is what the deal is with individuals that are being led and blinded by the evil one. Mm. Being on. separated from God. He's already, he's already condemned. He's in this place called hell. And, and he's already condemned. But he's trying to convince mankind you don't need God. Talk about it. Mm. This is a better way. And this is what we're talking about. Uh, things of uh, uh, giving in to your selfish desires, lust. Lust is not just uh, sexual, it's food. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it can be a yes. It's indulgence. It's indulgence. indulgence. Anything that you cannot control right. is indulgence. That's the reason why it says don't yes, give in to your own yes, selfish right. desires, your own lust. And this is the reason why we need God to control ourselves. Yes. And it's 5 o'clock and we got to take a break. Yes. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we will come back to this um, in just a moment. We have one of the uh, guests in the audience would like to say something. Yeah, quickly. I just want to just real quickly, um, just to go back to say, and I can speak for myself growing up, you know, I learned as a young black man, a young black boy growing up in the ghetto, going to an all predominantly all white school, becoming an educator. I'm an educator, mentor. We have to share our stories. Yeah. We have to share our testimonies, no matter where we are. Yeah. Everywhere I go, I don't care if and I have a road tie. I don't, I don't care where I'm at. I would get down on my, I would get in the dirt. I would get in the trenches Come on. with my brothers, with my sisters, and yes. share my story with yes. them. I'm with you. I've been there. I've done yes. that. I'm still growing from that. If we, we have to do more of that. We have to be more transparent inside the church, outside those four walls, so we can reach more people. Yes. And be real. Because yes. people could, we can, I can invite a brother and a sister off the street and say, come to church with me tomorrow. Yes. And they're going to come to church and they're going to see me in church shouting or singing, whatever, praying or whatever. Yes. They're going to say, okay, that's all I see of him. Mm -hmm. I need to see the real Otis. Yes. What does Otis yes. do on, at midnight? What come does on. Otis do at 1130 yes. at, you know, yes. on a Friday yes. night? Uh -huh. right. You know, so we have to be more transparent yes. and they can see the real. I still slip every once in a while, but who, who hold, God is my anchor. And I let every we have to let everybody know that God is our anchor, yeah. no matter where we fall, where yeah. we fall short of. And yeah. see, a lot of us are afraid to say that and say, "Okay, I don't want to. I'm not going to go to church. I don't want to believe in Christ because I got all these faults. Mm -hmm. I do all these wrong things. Come on, now let that let that go. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, you got to help yourself up. Stop yes. being afraid yes. to to grow yes. to be a better That's person. Mm -hmm. I, I teach. I'm a mentor. I teach these young black boys. You can have fun in Christ. Yes. Yes. You can have a ball. You can still enjoy life. Yes. I never thought to this day that I'm sitting right here. I never thought today that I would be in a place right here, right now, sharing with you beautiful people, and talking about life. It, nobody but God. Yes. Nobody but God. Yes. And I don't count that, you know, I don't take that for granted. And none of us should take that for granted right. when we have that opportunity. Yes. So I just want to show Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. We are going to have a brief break. And while we are breaking, we have a few, just a few lovely young ladies who would like to display their talent in modeling. Um, Mark Anthony, if you would, if you to have to excuse yourself, <laughs> <laughs> you have to excuse yourself. You are fine. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Are we ready with the sound? All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to move on anyway. Okay. I'll just be the DJ. I can make my own music. That's what I said. I don't want them. To <laughs> I wanted these young ladies to um, go ahead and have the chance to have the chance to have their uh, moment. So, but while we are doing this, we can, uh, you all can, you all are free to enjoy any kind of refreshments that we have on the table. So, without further delay, very quickly, the young ladies, please stand to your feet and let's get ready to model. Let's have some fun. Line up. 
Can we have a five minute intermission? Five minutes, just you got some cameras. Okay. Hang on, hang on, ladies, hang on. <laughs>